The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Ah, the paint is finally dry on the sign for my new shop. But I don't think we should stop there. There's other improvements we can make. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Here are the three things we're going to do in this episode, and hopefully it inspires you to make similar improvements to your shop. First, we're gonna build a material rack. Instead of piling material against the wall, we're going to build a moving cart that we can put wherever we want, depending on what we're doing. And it will store all of the four by four foot material stocks that we use in the CNC machine. Then we're going to build a desktop PC power supply. A lot of you have been asking about this. When we moved my shop, I threw away my old one because it was loud and lame. And I'm gonna build a new one. Basically what you do is you take a PC power supply that is out of date. So, you know, maybe a five or six year old one and you turn it into a bench supply with multiple voltages. It's pretty handy. Finally, we're going to finish up our CNC chip collector. What that does is it sucks the chips from the bit through a custom made device that I built. And then it goes through a bunch of tubing and then we have some valves. So it ends up in a shop vac. And we're gonna to try to combine that with the existing vacuum table so we can do it with a single shop vac to save power and of course, noise. Let's get started. One of the things I've added to the router since we moved is a easy to use dust collector. Now what the dust collector does that we never used before was it contains all the dust and chips coming off the bit and then it sucked up the back via a vacuum tube. The reason I never use it is because it's kind of hard to work with. You can't change the bit easily while it's on. So I just remove this part and then I read it on my own that has a quick change. Whoop, see that? So now I can get at the bit without removing the dust collector. So now I'll actually use the dust collector. Although ironically, as I build the dust collector vacuum system, I can't use the dust collector. <laughs> but yeah, very soon. So yeah, not having to completely remove the dust collector makes it a lot easier to change bits. And then once the bit is back in place, Close it, and you're ready to go. The pieces have been cut, now to sand and assemble them. All right. Felix put some cross braces in. And I put on a handle so we can move the material cart wherever we want. It has these slots for longer stock. All right, we're gonna finish filling this with materials and then we'll move on to the next shop hack. Computer power supplies are really useful for making a bench power supply. If you look at what they're rated at, the five volt line can do up to 25 amps, the 12 volt line, 16 amps, and that's quite a lot of power. I mean, even if that's overstated, which it probably isn't, you are, I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna, I can't hook up 25 amps, you know, honestly, I don't even know if you could run 25 amps through some of these wires. So yeah, they're all color coded. Yellow is 12 volts, black is ground, orange is 3.3 and red is five volts. And all you really need to do in order to make this work is attach the green wire to ground. That's power on and that will turn on your power supply. There's also going to be a constant five volts, which I believe is the blue line. 
that does things on your computer, like it allows it to turn on, it's basically like it's steady state. Um, we're gonna leave that disconnected so it'll conserve energy. So I'm gonna try to use as much of this as I can, but I also have additional wiring for length. This, these are the wires I pulled off of my old supply. And my old supply was here. I threw it in the garbage. <laughs> so that's pretty good amount of distance. I want at least that. And then something else I have on this are some screw pegs. So we have something to attach the alligator clips to so they don't short out each other. That's also why I'm using plastic because it doesn't conduct electricity. And I'm also gonna line everything with funky foam to reduce vibrations. I mean, this is a brand new power supply, it should be fine, but you never know. My old one was so noisy, I'm overcompensating. This is kind of a dinky power supply. I've got these from a friend. Uh, it's still gonna have plenty of juice for anything we might do with it. So yeah, if you have an old computer with a power supply that's no longer good enough for your new video card, which happens a lot with PCs, turn it into a bench supply. I'm right, gonna get started on the case. Dun, 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 dun. Actually, you know what? I could use this plug for something else. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it off about halfway. And then Samson lost all his power. Hey, put this in the cable bin for computer stuff, thanks. There's plenty of wires here, really too many. So I'm gonna hook up what I need. So I'm gonna hook up the green and one black to the switch, which will turn on the power supply. Uh, then the other ones that I don't need, I'm going to base, make sure the ends are insulated and then just tie them off under this panel. So they're basically just out of the way. So the smallest power supply is still gonna have more power leads than you'll ever really need. So yeah. And even one that's, you know, 250 watts, you know, doesn't sound like a lot for a computer, but that's still quite a bit of power for individual applications. Some color. Yeah, green is good. I don't want blue. Blue is stupid. Yeah, blue is cliche. Grab me a uh, 1K resistor. Make sure you put a resistor in line with your power indicator LED. Otherwise, you're going to be dumping a lot of current through your resistor, or through your LED, I mean. And then just hook this up to a 5 volt line or a 3.3 volt line. I'll probably use 3.3 volts. So it's going to be one of these orange ones. I'm using some 18 gauge wire for my alligator leads just to make sure they can carry enough current. So since I have plenty of wires here, I'm actually gonna take these two thinner black wires and combine them with this single thicker lead wire, just to make sure. I mean, we've got plenty of connections. I might as well use them up to make sure we're delivering enough current to our test leads. power supply has all the most useful voltages on it. What a surprise. So I'm gonna hook up yellow for 12 volts. Older power supplies also had negative voltages. Um, the modern ones don't always, so I'm not really gonna worry about those too much. I'm just going for 3.35 ground and 12 volts. Oh, copper wiring, nice. I don't have any orange wire, but I always used green for 3.3, so I guess I'll continue to. Uh, yeah. And I put this pink thing on here to help me. That's kind of like orange. So that's 3.3. I'll probably label it as well. Hey, I got to work with the colors that I have. All these colors and no orange. I'm learning to paint with all the colors of the wind. Got plenty of wires. Um, I'm going to use the yellow here because it's 12 volts. These other ones I'm just going to cut off so the 
Blacks are ground, so they don't matter, but I'm gonna cut the orange at a slightly separate distance. That way, if I tape them up, there's no possibility of them touching and short-circuiting. Okay, I'm gonna, oh, there's one more wire here I wanna cover. So all the wires are either attached to something or taped up and insulated. Okay. So they're gonna come down like this in the old timber. All right, I'm gonna put the top on and the other side. I'm putting this facade on to cover up the linkage just to make it look kind of cool on my desk. Then these holes here are for the brackets to mount it to the desk. So I'm not sure if it'll, it'll probably stand up fine on its own, but I'll still mount it. And then I have the space in here because I'm gonna insert screws here. And the purpose is these can clip onto them and not short circuit. Your favorite movie. Power supply turned out pretty nice. It has airflow in the back and on the side, a cool design, and then plenty of these screws where you can attach unused leads, that way they can't touch each other. Unless you want them to, Arian. So I'm gonna put these leads in place and then bolt it to my desk. We're going to hook up the dust collector now. Earlier I showed you how the dust collector itself worked, but you have to get those chips out somehow. This was always here, a brace for a vacuum hose. So we got this shop vac hose, and we have several extensions of it. And the idea is it's gonna come out the top of the machine. It needs enough slack for wherever the machine might go. Then we're going to have a swing arm. Well, it's not gonna swing, it's just gonna be an arm. that goes against the wall and that'll go down. And then under the machine will be a shop vac that will pull the chips out. And we're also gonna to try to attach a single shop vac to the chip collection and the vacuum with valves to set the pressure to see if that works. So that's what Felix and I are gonna do next. So I'm building the supports that we're going to put along the wall for the material. One of them is going to stick out a little bit longer and we're going to have the hose that's going to hang off of it. One of them is 48. Okay. While Felix does that, I'm going to work on the hose adapters so we can go from the vacuum table and the chip collector to the same single shot back. One turns on the table, one turns on the dust collector. You probably always want the dust collector. The table, maybe not so much actually. So yeah, and we should have variable control of this, so we'll see if it works. Double-sided tape might not be the best way to do this, but it may also work. <laughs> I'm not gonna drill bolts through steel. Not in the mood for that today. Valerian steel. Die. <laughs> yeah. And that's how you field dress your shop bot. You take this back to your lodge and uh, feed your 86 kids with it. It's feed a family of 86 for approximately two days. Up is closed, sideways, like it's flowing through, is on. But I might need a new place for my... Oh well, that's life. We are building adapters since the thin tubing doesn't have adapters apparently, so we're having to do it ourselves. So we're hacking these pieces into these pieces so we can make a nice long pipe. Also a sloth jail. So I've completed the racks for the material holding and 
the hose. What we're going to do now is attach enough tubing on top of the machine so that no matter where the machine moves, there's enough slack. So we have our beam coming out halfway across the machine and halfway down it. So now we just have to go to the extremities of the machine and make sure the tubes are long enough. And you want to put an eyelet there for rotation? Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. We have tons of those. Did you want to zip tie through it or what do you want to do through it? Yeah, uh, zip tie between through the eyelet and then around the tube. Okay, um, let's do an extremity check with the machine. I'm going to move it backwards. Probably going to want to step over it when the time comes. So since the tube comes out the back, that means it needs the most slack at the back. So this extremity is the one we really want to watch out for. Let's do a test of the hold down table. So I'm gonna turn off the chip collector and turn on the hold down table. Oh, well, okay, that's as strong as it was before. Uh, now let's try chip collection and hold down table. So the hold down table should be weaker. Uh, it's still pretty strong. Let me just make sure I did that right. Okay, so this is closed, closed. So this is table open, chip collector closed. <clears throat> okay, this is collecting chips and sucking the table. I could move it a little bit that time, so yes, it does make it weaker because of course it would. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, still seems to work out pretty good. I don't know, I think we need to route something as an example. Here is the result. Um, there are chips left, you know, I think that's gonna happen pretty much no matter what. But the important thing is the dust isn't everywhere else in the machine. If there's gonna be dust left, it might as well be you know, right here. So what I realized with the knobs is you have to have a balance. Like you can turn them, well, you don't wanna have them both off, but you usually want the um, chip suction to be all the way on because these fins are loose. It's never gonna have a perfect seal. Whereas your vacuum table, it's really easy to cover up all of the holes and get a really good seal. So I was able to have that only at about uh, half. Uh, yeah, so here is the sign that I made. It just says simplify because I guess reasons. <laughs> yeah, so a little cleanup and it's good to go. So yeah, the router is a lot better off than it used to be. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be building an ultrasonic proximity warning hat. I wonder what that will entail. We'll see you then. Oh, I bought a lot of stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I might have misspoke there, so don't use that. Hello, camera. Evil shop vac. You mean like the city of McFarland? You know, that city's on the up and up, you know. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.